Today we're going to be going over a Traeger pellet grill refurbishment. As you can see, I got this Traeger off of uh, Facebook Marketplace for $50. You can find the same kind of deal on Marketplace and many other places uh, to get you smoking. These are just starter options and keeps you from having to spend a lot of money. Here you can see the brand new price of this same Traeger Tailgrader grill. It varies anywhere from five dollars $600. And here's our project. So one thing I will say is not to be scared of the way these grills look when you buy them at these cheaper prices. They all look pretty much the same. They're all going to be worn out. They're all going to have some burnt sections, burn marks on the outside, as you can see. I'll explain that process to you, but you can see how hot it got and the fire that burned it, burn it up. As we're opening this up, 100% of the time these grills are going to look like this. Your average person does not take the time to clean the pellet grills out like they should. You can see the buildup from all the different cooking and smoking that they've done on here. And that's really what causes the fire. I'll let you YouTube uh, pellet grill fires. But 100% of the time, this is what causes it. You see how the tray's worn out, the grease is built up. And just all this buildup as you're cooking causes fires over time as it's closer and closer and builds up and the tray wears out. The grease strips down onto the fire source and starts a fire and then now you're overheating it and getting it hot like the outside of this one is. Part of this, and as you'll see, you've got to keep these things cleaned out as you're cooking. Elliot's starting the first clean out process of the grills after you get it. This is the drip tray. As you're cooking and smoking things on this pellet grill, the drippings come down and drain into a side drain bucket. And you can see how worn out it is if you don't clean it out and keep it clean. If you take care of these pans, they do not wear out like this. But of course, if you do not keep them clean, they end up looking like this. And 100% of the time, this is what they look like when people are trying to sell them on marketplace build up inside as well all the ash that's built up after the multiple cooks and if you don't take time to clean that out after every one or two cooks i actually clean mine out every cook just to make sure but you can see the build up inside this is the hot box this is covering the hot box as far as keeping the main flame off the bottom of the pan and it disperses the heat throughout uh, the box for the smoking purposes see the build up inside that it actually builds up inside the hot box as well so keeping that clean is a key point of keeping the grill clean and also safe for use there's a hot stick in underneath that auger and that's what actually lights and keeps everything going as the pellets are firing up and it's important to keep all this clean and as you can see the previous owner did not clean it as well you can see the build up here on the lid uh, after all the cooks i'm not sure if they cleaned it any at all but what you're going to see is us working through the process of cleaning this grill up and getting it back to working like new for under $150. So here we're starting the cleaning process just scraping off the buildup of the lid. Pro that whole process inside and out. You can really see with this scraper the buildup that's on the lid. And if you can imagine that this is on the lid, what was on the inside and what was on that drip tray uh, as you're cooking and smoking, what's dripping down and caking up and causing the fire issue. This is the vacuum we're going to be using in this video. I bought mine at Lowe's. I've had mine for two years. And this is what I use to keep my pellet grill clean. I actually bought my pellet grill uh, for under $100. It's a Traeger as well. And after every one or two cooks, I take everything out and vacuum everything out, clean it up really good to keep that build up from happening. Here's some footage of Elliot cleaning it out, vacuuming it well, the pellet box included. 
uh, worked on this for about 30 45 minutes that's the best thing about these grills it doesn't take long to get them cleaned up as long as you have all the necessary parts after you clean and scraped it up to get it back going you're on your way to grilling and outside with your kids and family enjoying the outdoors and grilling Next comes the sanding and painting. I've got this from my local Lowe's. You can get yours from your local hardware store. They all carry the same amount. It's just a hard grit sandpaper block to uh, knock, it, knock this rust off and then the high heat paint to get it uh, painted back up after we get done. And here's gonna be a little footage of Elliot sanding. It's real important when you're sanding to make sure you get every bit that you can so the paint sticks correctly afterwards. You're going to see later, we're going to put three or four coats on this, and it's real important to keep it from peeling up. Uh, again, you'll see that it's a 1500 degree paint that should be able to withstand the four to 500 degrees this pellet grill foots off. But just getting every nook and cranny you can, especially around the lid, to make sure you've got a clean seal is really important. Here Elliot's hitting the hot box cover with a little bit of sandpaper and now we're starting the painting process. Uh, just like everything else, holding it away from the grill and just laying three to four layers down, letting them dry as they get put on as grill and pour. You don't want run marks and you don't want things to be caked up. So here Elliot's just laying the layers down of paint and letting it dry. Using Dawn Power Spray and your general oven cleaner you can get at basically any general store to help break the grease and grime buildup off of the lid. And you're going to see here in a minute, we take it to the uh, local car wash and give it a good pressure wash and scrubbing. Starting to get things put back together now, putting the hot box cover back in, the lid back on. You're going to see here when you close the lid, you will have gaps. Now you can bend these out a little bit to help them conform but you can still see the large gap that's in it that allows smoke to get out. So we're gonna be putting some heat resistant gasket seal around this lid to help hold the smoke in. None of the pellet grills come with this, but you can buy it at Lowe's again here. It's just a universal brand that you can use on any type grill, charcoal or pellet. You just unroll it and put it, open the lid up, measure the lengths of it from side to side and all the way around and then just apply it. It's got a sticky back and then you just peel it off and apply it. The gap that this gasket seal helps uh, close up. What you want is all the smoke possible that you can keep in the grill, in the grill. I know on this one has vents on the back due to it being a tailgater model, but others have the vent out of the side. But keeping everything on top of the smoke, on top of the meat, is important when you're using these grills. Now comes the new drip tray. I got this one off of Amazon. They make these replacement trays for all pellet grills. So just do your research and make sure you're getting the right one that fits your grill. This is a little bit heavier gauge tray than what comes with them, but still keeping them clean and making sure you're covering them with aluminum foil as you're cooking plays an important part of making sure it doesn't break down and rust out like the one previously shown when we first bought it. And these trays can vary anywhere price wise from 40 to $60. This one's right at $48 for this grill. So, so far you could say I've got right at $100 in it. Next comes the grate. Uh, this is not a new grate. These hold up really well from the two or three pellet grills I've already redone myself. All you have to do is take them out and just like your oven rack uh, in your oven in your home, just cleaning it up really good, scrubbing it down and installing it will do the trick. And now it's time to turn it on and see what we got.
smoke coming up and it's ready to grill. Well, we thought it was ready to grill, but the guy I bought it from was open and honest, and he said that the temperature control was varying. It was jumping up 100 to 200 different degrees higher than what the setting was. So now we've got to tackle that, but don't worry, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can order these control panels from Amazon as well. They're about $30 to $40, depending on the type grill you have. And it's basically plug and play. Here's the temperature variance I was speaking to. You can see that it's almost 100 degrees hotter. Then the setting is on the grill. So underneath the pellet hopper, you've got this wiring harness. You just clip these zip ties. And the best thing about these are they're all color coded the same. So the universal controller that you get, the colors are going to line up. So you just basically undo the clip and pull it out. It's nothing hard. It's plug and play and makes it fairly simple. And then you place the new one in. And I always like to test it before I screw it uh, back in and mount it. I always like to check and make sure it works before I screw the panel down. But as you can see, we've got everything installed. It's holding temperature and we're ready to go. Fairly simple process, making sure you just change the pans out, change the controller if needed. And now you're grilling and you're not spending $600 on the grill. I've got $150 total in this. Here's a picture of the grill from my father-in-law. He got it from me. He's new to smoking. This is his first brisket. And I'll have to say I was impressed with the smoke ring. I've been smoking for about three years now and hadn't seen one that good. And here's some ribs he tried a few days later. They turned out great as well. 